Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Mark's Parish. A very special welcome for those visiting us today. Our celebrant this morning is Father Cora. Please stand. He fed them with the finest wheat and satisfied them with honey from the rock. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ, also known as Corpus Christi Sunday. And it's a day when we focus in a special way on the mystery of the Eucharist, uh, Jesus' very gift of himself in the blessed sacrament to us. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for the angel of the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. The Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, the Lord God, and of God, the Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, and have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, and you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, to Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. And being a priest of God most high, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God most high, the creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God, most high, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The scepter of your power the Lord will stretch forth from Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. You are Jesus forever in the line of Melchizedek. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth, in holy splendor. Before the day star, like the dew, I have begotten you. You are a priest forever in the line the Lord has sworn and he will not repent you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek you are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. On Corpus Christi Sunday, just like on Pentecost, there's what's called the sequence, and we'll just read together the shorter version of that uh, for Corpus Christi Sunday. So listen to the lecture, and if you have the missiles, you can follow along uh, with the shorter version of the sequence. Lo, the angel's food is given to the pilgrim who has striven. See the children's bread from heaven which on dogs may not be spent. Truth, the ancient types fulfilling, Isaac bound, the victim willing, Paschal lamb, its lifeblood spilling, manna to the Father sent. Very bread, good shepherd, tend us. Jesu, of your love, befriend us. You refresh us, you defend us. Your eternal goodness send us in the land of life to see. You who all things can and know, who on earth such food bestow, grant us with your saints, though lowest, where the heavenly feast you show, fellow heirs and guests to be. Amen. Hallelujah.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd, so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms, and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some, of, give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about five thousand. Then he said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about fifty. They did so, and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples, to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled twelve, twelve wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. For those of you with good memories, uh, last Corpus Christi Sunday, I reflected on Corpus Christi, or the body of Christ, the mystery of the Eucharist, within the joyful mysteries of the Rosary. Uh, and then this year, I was thinking we could look at the Corpus Christi, the, the body of Christ, in the luminous mysteries of the, of the Rosary. And the reason I'm telling you this is so that you don't think I just recycled last year's song. <laughs> this is a new one. Uh, so we're looking at Corpus Christi, the body of Christ, within the luminous mysteries of the Rosary. Uh, so the Luminous Mysteries are the ones that John Paul II uh, gave us to reflect on as we pray the Rosary. And they are the Baptism in the Jordan, when Jesus was baptized by his cousin John in the Jordan River. Uh, the Wedding Feast at Cana, when water was turned into wine through this intercession of Mary and the miraculous working of Jesus. The Proclamation of the Kingdom and Call to Conversion, uh, when Jesus preached the Kingdom. The Transfiguration, when Jesus was miraculously transformed before the eyes of his three close apostles, Peter, James, and John, on Mount Tabor. And the Institution of the Holy Eucharist is the last uh, luminous mystery when Jesus gives himself to us in the Eucharist. So first, uh, the Baptism in the Jordan. And the fruit of this mystery, as we pray it, we should reflect on having an openness to the Holy Spirit. Because at that moment when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan, what happened? The Holy Spirit descended upon him, right? Um, so that's something that we all desire, to have the Holy Spirit descend upon us. And in this mystery, we see the body of Christ anointed with the Holy Spirit. When are we anointed with the Holy Spirit in our own Christian journey? During our baptism, right? And that's sealed in the gift of confirmation, when we receive uh, the fullness of baptismal grace is sealed in us, uh, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in a special way in those two sacraments. So the body of Christ is anointed with the Holy Spirit at that moment when we uh, are made the body of Christ and receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, it is through the gift of the Holy Spirit that we recognize Jesus. So uh, Jesus makes known to us the love of the Father. Everything we see in Jesus is a manifestation of the love of the Father for us. But it's the Holy Spirit who makes known to us truly who Jesus is. Uh, by receiving the Holy Spirit and being open to the Holy Spirit, we come to understand really who Jesus Christ is. And when we look upon the Eucharist, I will really be able to know that it's Him, that He's there in the Blessed Sacrament through the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit, to know and to recognize the presence of Jesus. And something that Bishop Robert Barron reflected on really beautifully is having a devotion to the Eucharist is something that those who work with the, the poorest of the poor uh, also had. They had a great devotion to Jesus in the Eucharist. Think of Mother Teresa. Uh, her sisters and herself, they prayed two holy hours every day before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, I think it was uh, Dorothy Day, she had a great devotion to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, so too, I believe, Catherine Drexel, who worked with the poor. Um, and St. Francis, he had a great love for Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, and he himself uh, worked with the poor. So we see in all of these saints and holy people who had a great devotion to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, also a wonderful love 
for Jesus disguised and the distressing disguise of the poor. And that's something that we can take to heart as well. Uh, to be open to the Holy Spirit, to recognize Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, to adore Him and to love Him. And then that forms us to then go out and to see Him in our brothers and sisters who are uh, poor in many different ways, uh, materially poor and spiritually poor as well. So the first one is baptism in the Jordan. The second mystery is the wedding feast at Cana. And the fruit of this mystery is to Jesus through Mary. So we want to go to Jesus through Mary. And at the wedding feast, Jesus turned water into wine, and Mary had a special role to play at that moment. She brought this to the attention of Jesus, that the bride and groom whose wedding feast they were attending had run out of wine. She said, they have no wine. And then he said, what is this to you and to me? And then she told the, the attendants at the wedding, do whatever he tells you. So it's through Mary's intercession that this mystery, uh, this miracle is initiated. And at that wedding feast, Jesus turned water into wine. Uh, so the humble water was turned into this great gift of not just any wine, but the, the uh, servant at the wedding said, this is the best wine, and you saved it for last. And all this is to foreshadow a very special mystery that we reflect on today, uh, when Jesus turned wine and bread into his very body and blood, soul, and divinity when we experience transubstantiation. When the bread and wine, they're not just transformed, they're transubstantiated, which means that their very essence is changed, that they become the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus, uh, which we then get to receive. So the second one is the wedding feast at Cana to Jesus through Mary, uh, through the intercession of Mary, this wonderful miracle taking place, and then through Mary who gave us the body of Christ through her yes, uh, we get to receive that same body of Christ when the bread and wine are transubstantiated into his body and blood, soul, and divinity. The third mystery, the proclamation of the kingdom and call to conversion. So the fruit of this mystery is repentance and also trust in God. Uh, so one of the greatest deals on earth, uh, like you could go to Costco and get a great deal. You could uh, get like, these nice deals for Father's Day on Amazon. Hopefully you did that. You know, got a good nice gift for your dad. Uh, but when we look at all the deals in the world, this is the greatest deal that we could ever experience. When we give God our sins, what does he give us? Uh, I mean, look, uh, condemnation, tell us how awful we are. Now, when we give God our sins, he gives us his mercy. It's the best deal in the world. Uh, we give God our sins, he gives us his mercy, and we experience forgiveness. And I know a lot of people walk around with a uh, heavy weight on their shoulders, feeling like they can never be forgiven, or that they have to walk around with shame, um, all these things that they carry with them, and it's not the case. Uh, we can go to confession and experience forgiveness, and to have that weight lifted off of our shoulders. It's a beautiful gift. When we give God our sins, He gives us His mercy. And this is the proclamation of the kingdom that we hear about in the luminous mystery, the third luminous mystery. So when we approach Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we need to approach Him with a clean heart. And if we're aware of any mortal or grave sin on our heart, uh, we need to repent of that and go to confession to receive that healing mercy before we re receive Jesus into our heart. And that's something that the church has always taught. If we uh, have that grave sin on our heart, we shouldn't receive Jesus in the Eucharist. Uh, we, and we have the great gift of confession to go and to repent and to receive the healing mercy that we long for, to get that weight off of our shoulders and our heart, and then to commune with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. So this great mystery of the call to repentance and to have a trust in God's mercy, that he is merciful with us and he loves us. Uh, fourth is the transfiguration. And the fruit of this mystery is the desire for holiness. And in this mystery, we get a preview of what's to come for us. We see Jesus' body transfigured before the eyes of Peter, James, and John. Moses and Elijah appear before Jesus as well. And this is something that we can anticipate. Uh, Jesus is kind of pulling back the veil of what's already there in him, uh, his, his divinity. And through our Christian journey, our desire for holiness, uh, we're growing more and more into that likeness. And he's showing us what our resurrected bodies will look like at the end of time. Um, so this is a revelation of what's to come for us. And the desire for holiness means desire to be close to God. Uh, that's the simple idea of holiness, is to remain close to God and to seek greater and greater closeness to God. Now, the, where's the, the place that we're going to experience the, the greatest closeness with God on this earth? When, are, when do we get to experience that? In Holy Communion, right? We receive Jesus in the Eucharist. 
<clears throat> That's the time when we get to experience the closeness of God in a way unlike any other, when God himself enters our heart. Um, so that's a holy moment, and we should always prepare ourselves as we're approaching to receive communion for that holy moment when Jesus is going to come and dwell in our hearts. Fifth is the institution of the Holy Eucharist, and the fruit of this mystery is adoration. Adoration is due to God alone. Uh, we aren't meant to give adoration to anyone else. Uh, you might like see uh, people say, I adore you, you know, uh, these kind of, like a nice phrase. Uh, but really, adoration is due to God alone. Only God is worthy of our adoration. And what do we say when we go to the church to see Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament in that, that gold thing called the monstrance? We call that adoration, right? So we have that opportunity to grow in greater and greater adoration of Jesus, who's present there in the Blessed Sacrament. This is the crowning mystery of these luminous mysteries, uh, which we reflect on when we reflect on the Last Supper. Jesus is handing over of himself in the Holy Eucharist. And we can contemplate uh, the love of Jesus. Uh, that's why he gives himself to us, because he loves us. And he wants to be close to us. He wants to transform us so that we might become loving people in this world as well and reflect his love to every person that we encounter. Uh, so we've gone through the luminous mysteries on this Corpus Christi Sunday, looking at how they're related to Jesus in the Eucharist and how he gives himself to us in the Blessed Sacrament desires our transformation, uh, that we might experience mercy uh, and transformation in our lives and grow in holiness. So again, those mysteries are the baptism in the Jordan, openness to the Holy Spirit, wedding feast at Cana, through Jesus, through Mary, the proclamation of the kingdom and call to conversion, repentance and trust in God, the transfiguration, desire for holiness, the institution of the Holy Eucharist, adoration. Satisfaction in the Catholic Church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That the entire world come to know Jesus in the breaking of the bread, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. For all the victims of the recent mass shooting and all killed or harmed by violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the people of Ukraine, suffering the brutality of war, for peace now, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the sick, especially the seriously ill in our parish, Ella Gallic, Eva Ruiz, Rose Corpus, Jose Batista, Alex Yu, Paul Sullivan, Andy Montanez, 
and all those named on our prayer wall, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For those who have died, especially the recently deceased in our parish, Jose Lemus, Levi Ethan Pierce, Dorothy De Janeiro, Furman Mendoza Sanchez, Kathleen Herbert, and all those named on our prayer wall, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers. For Mr. and Mrs. Yo Goon Wok, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive my sacrifice and your hands, and the praise of the Lord is me, our God and the Lord. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery, and the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, 
And with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant your peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, John and Ramona's auxiliary bishops, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, where they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. <clears throat> Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, 
and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, which John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to teach them to God, but I want to say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
take up the Peter's Pence collection to support the Universal Church and the work of the Holy See, including helping Pope Francis to carry out his charitable works. These works benefit our brothers and sisters on the margins of society, including victims of war, oppression, and disasters. Join us next Sunday after the morning masses in Healy Hall for a farewell reception for Father Corey. Uh, join us in thanking him for his years of ministry to St. Mark's. Thank you, Father. So I'll be going to a different parish uh, at the end of the month. I'll move to a different parish called Santa Sophia in Spring Valley. Uh, but it's been great being with you, and I give thanks to God for this time at St. Mark's. Please stand. We have a special Father's Day blessing, so I'll give this blessing for the fathers who are present on Father's Day. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men, that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, and Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.